This is a video demonstration of the Oz primary flight display for an instrument approach to runway 36 at KIXD Airport. In order to easily see all the values on the Oz display in this video, we highly recommend that you watch it in 720p or high definition. You can do so by clicking the 720p button on the bottom right of the YouTube toolbar. Once we've concluded the flight, we'll do a brief post-flight analysis to show how well the performance was using OZ for the instrument approach into runway 36. Let's try flying an approach now. All I'm going to do is start my turn to the first waypoint, which is going to be NAPFI. And we're 1.8 nautical miles out. So all I'm, all I'm going to do is put the nose ring aligned to the center of the GPS symbol on the screen and you'll clearly see that it's slightly below the horizon which means we are above the altitude of the waypoint that we want to pass over which is going to be 3100 feet and you can see on the approach plate over here 3100 feet which tells us that the waypoint is programmed to coincide with these altitudes so all I do is put the nose ring onto that waypoint and we'll start to slowly descend down towards it and as we do so, you'll see that the magenta star layer, which is set to our target altitude of 3,100 feet, will slowly start to come level with the horizon. So we're now passing the waypoint NAPV because we're about 0.3 nautical miles out, and it's going towards the edge of the screen. Once we pass it, it will change colors to orange, and it just went to the center of the screen because it's now behind us. And so all I'll do is level out because we're at 3,100 feet. And I'll start a standard rate turn to the next waypoint, which is Anquam. And so I just put the bent wings on the horizon. We're doing a level standard rate turn. Our airspeed looks great because the speed stick is more or less near the center of the diamond. So I'll level out now and we're flying directly towards Anquam and we're four nautical miles away. You might be wondering what that green line is that just appeared on the bottom of the screen. That's the extension of the runway center line and so it gives us a visual cue of where the runway is very early in the game and we can see the airport symbol which is quite small right now because we're far away but it's the standard symbol you're used to seeing on your sectional chart. So you can see we're holding our altitude right now, which is 3,109 feet. So I'm almost between 10 to 30 feet off at any given time as I'm talking. And I'm really not trying hard at all to do so. And I'm not scanning at any point during this flight. All I have to do is align the graphical cues with their appropriate indicators. So the nose ring to the waypoint, which keeps the magenta star layer on the horizon and I adjust the throttle to keep the speed stick on the center of the diamond you might be wondering also why the heading is not aligned exactly with the waypoint and keep in mind that's the heading to the waypoint if there was no wind we have some wind turned on during this simulation so we have to compensate our heading to correct for that deviation because the nose ring is going to get us directly to that waypoint based on the ground track. So now we can see we're 0.3 nautical miles away from Anquam and the localizer needle starting to come in. So I'm going to start my turn in anticipation of the next waypoint which is Jikla. Anquam just went off the screen and turned orange because we passed it. So you now see two orange waypoints on the screen, NAPV and Jikla, which are behind us. And you can clearly see that airport symbol, which is drawn now, like in your sectional chart, which is behind Jikla. So now Jikla, according to our sectional 
or our approach plate over here on the top of the screen is 2,700 feet. So we have to start our descent. So all I'm going to do is put the nose ring on the waypoint. And the waypoint has an angular deflection below the horizon so that once we get to that waypoint, we should be at 2,700 feet. And I'm going to extend one notch of flaps at this point and slow down to 90 knots. And so I'll move the speed diamond down now to reflect the new target of 90 knots for our approach speed. I'm also going to adjust the target star layer down to 2,700 feet. And I'll adjust the heading bug so that it reads the target heading of the runway center line, which should be 356 degrees. So we now have all our bugs set to the new targets. We can see we're now coming up on our altitude bug of 2,700 feet. And that's level with the horizon, and so is the waypoint for Jikla. Our airspeed's a little bit low, so I'll add some more power. And we can also see now that the airport symbol has gone away as we got closer to the airport. And instead what we have is a depiction of the threshold end of the runway. So you can see now, if you look on the edges of the screen, it gives us our altitude readout. We're only about 20 to 30 feet off of our target altitude. And at this point, looking at the approach plate, we are transitioning from Ankwum to Jikla, so we're somewhere along this line right here. As we get over Jikla, we're two nautical miles out, the glide slope needle is going to start to walk down and level with the horizon, at which point I'll pitch the aircraft's nose down so that this yellow nose ring is just tangent to the top of the horizon, and that'll mean we're on a three degree descent to the runway, and that will keep the, local, or the glide slope needle centered on the screen very, very easily. And at which point, all I really have to do is focus on my airspeed, and also the localizer needle for the center of the airplane to the center line of the runway. So here comes the glide slope needle and it's starting to come down. And what I'll do is I'm going to reset my target altitude down to the decision height. And you'll recall that because I'm using the ILS in a modified approach down to the runway, because I have a GPS approach plate shown right now, but I'm going to use the ILS. I'm going to use the ILS decision altitude of 1,266 feet. So I'll use the closest value, which is 1,270. That'll be a nice visual reminder as we're getting closer to the ground of when I should be looking out the window. So now the needles are starting to come to the center of the screen. And so I'm going to simply put the nose ring tangent to the horizon. So we can see now we're following the glide slope very accurately. And we've got the localizer needle also centered quite nicely. Because Oz uses the full width and height of the screen, the center quarter of the screen in the vertical and horizontal direction represents one dot of deflection on the CDI indicator. And that would correspond to airline transport standards. So even though you see the needles moving around quite a bit, they're actually very sensitive, but you're deviation from your desired heading and glide slope is not nearly as bad as you think it is.
and we'll see this as I do a playback of a post-flight analysis on how well we were coming into the runway. We do have some perturbations of the airplane. You can see that the OZ display is bouncing around a little bit, and that's because we do have turbulence turned on. And we can see our decision altitude layer at 1,270 feet as we're starting to get closer to the runway. Our glide slope is looking very nice, and our localizer is looking quite nice as well. Airspeed is a little bit fast, so I'll back out on the power a little bit. So now we're at our GPS decision altitude. And now we're at our ILS decision altitude. And looking out the window, I can see the runway. And we're lined up with the center line. So I'm going to slowly start to back out power as I aim for the touchdown zone. Nice and stabilized slowly reducing the power so that we can execute the flare. And we're right on the runway center line. So there you go. We went all the way down to the runway in IMC conditions. We didn't have to do any scanning and it was very easy to hold all our target headings, altitudes, and air speeds with very tight tolerances without trying very hard. Now I'm going to play back the flight that we just did to get a look at how well was I within the glide slope tolerances. Here you can see we intercept the glide slope at Jikla and start our descent down. And the path is uh, right smack in the center of the glide slope and also in terms of the center line of the runway the whole way down. So we were actually very, very accurate uh, throughout that entire flight, despite the fact that I was talking and explaining and not devoting my full concentration to landing in instrument weather. This concludes our series of tutorials on the Oz primary flight display. We thank you for watching and hope you find them helpful. The next step is for you to go to our website, www.fly-esky.com, where you can download for free and try yourself the simulator you just saw here. With a little bit of practice, we think you'll find that you'll prefer the Oz display over anything else you've flown because it'll give you that mental picture of what the aircraft's doing without doing any scan and will significantly reduce the pilot workload.